Hey, welcome to part two, episode two. We're going to be taking on Hydro City Zone this time. As you can see from the map, quite a lot of water in this zone. Quite a lot of gold rings as well, actually. A lot of the big gold ones, there's quite a few special stages that you can get into. Uh, here's Act 2. Uh, probably end up in water more often in Act 2, I'd say, than Act 1. You see all these weird little blue slides around. So here's Blastoid. Blastoid's kind of similar to Bluminator in that if you've got a shield, he literally can't do anything to you. This is Bugganaut. Bugganaut's, you know, you rarely ever even come up against these things. They kind of buzz around you every now and then and you don't even really notice them. This guy, though, this is Jaws, and Jaws is a fucking douchebag. Every now and then you'll just be running along and then these guys will just come out of nowhere and start smashing you in the face. Here's Mega Chopper. Mega Chopper sort of chases you around, tries to grab hold of you, and generally doesn't really ever do much. I don't even remember seeing him very often in these levels, to be honest. And this is Point Dexter. Point Dexter doesn't really do too much. He floats around every now and then these spikes come out. And as long as you're not doing anything too stupid, he should never really cause you any trouble. And finally, the Turbo Spiker. Turbo Spiker stops, shoots this weird little spiky cone off of his back if you get too close to him. But he pretty much only appears next to loops, so as long as you're spinning, he won't do anything to you. So let's get into the gameplay. You start falling straight from Angel Island, and in the middle of these two double spikes. Usually they're pretty annoying, but pretty easy to get out of these ones. There's Poindexter, you can see him sort of doing his weird thing where he puffs out into spikes. And I know there's some rings up here, so I'm just going to grab these before we go forward. Now one thing I do want to say about this zone is that this is, without a shadow of a doubt, one of the greatest uh, pieces of music in all of the Sonic the Hedgehog series, both this and Act 2. Act 2 might, Act 2 might even be a little bit better actually. But we're going to miss it for a second here, because we're going to get some invincibility. So, on the subject of music actually, the invincibility music in Sonic 3 and Knuckles is the music from Sonic and Knuckles rather than Sonic 3, which is probably a good thing, because actually the Sonic 3 one's a little bit annoying. Um, so yeah, every, there's quite a few things actually that take the Sonic and Knuckles themes rather than the Sonic 3 ones throughout this game. Now you can see these little red numbers appear in here, which tell us that Tails is about to drown. So, this is something that's been in pretty much every Sonic game. If you just wait around like we're going to do now, and don't get these little bubbles that you know will usually give you some air, here we go. So these little red numbers and this music, this terrifying music, tell you that you've got that long left until Sonic fucking blast away. Um, so yeah, Blastoid can be a nuisance until you get one of these, and then literally you can't do anything to you, just like the uh, Bluminator in the level before. Um, but yeah, so if you let that counter get down to zero, then you'll drown. And it happens to Tails all the time because he just doesn't ever pick up the uh, bubbles. But, of course, the bubble shield, as I mentioned in Angel Island, stops you from drowning anyway, so you don't have to keep on jumping up, taking air, if you've got one of these. You can build up some pretty good speed in this level as well. Quite a lot of loops, quite a lot of springs into these huge ramps, and this pretty cool effect where you run on top of the water or spin over the top of the water if you're going quick enough. If you're not going quick enough, you'll actually just sink into a... Uh, the water. You can see a turbo spike there, we're not even going to bother going near him now. And some of those weird mega choppers, which, I mean, other than this, I just really cannot think of when they turn up in this thing. Again, Blastoid is too easy to deal with when you've got a shield. But I don't want to go near these, uh, these Poindexters usually, just because you never know when they're going to go spiky and 
get rid of your shield. Oh, now here's something that's actually a lot more difficult if you don't have the shield. Now, if you see what I did there, using the bounce means you can hit that switch pretty quick, but without it, it's actually quite hard to time your jump when you know your, your fall from the jump slows so much when you're in water. So you're risking getting hit by those spikes. Now I like to check all these walls just in case there's a gold ring there, uh, one of the big ones, but nothing around here. But we are going to get into a special stage now. And here we are on the red planet. Pretty much everything's the same as normal here, so I'm not going to tell you anything about these special stages. You know the drill now, let's see what happens. A dung goose. Yeah, I went pretty wrong there. It's probably best to get those two uh, in a different way or at a different time, but we're going to have a go at it later on. Um, weird thing, if you do miss a special stage or if you do lose one like that, then it won't turn up again until the end of the string. So if I go into another special stage, it'll be the next emerald, and that red planet won't show up until after all the others again. But we're about to get into the mini boss now for this level. So as I said earlier, there's a mini boss in every Act 1. As far as I can remember every Act 1. Um, this guy's probably the most difficult of all the mini bosses and that's really not saying much to be honest. Uh, even though, ooh, if you really don't climb the jump right when he goes over there, you should probably be jumping in the middle. I don't know why I'm over on the side there. Um, but that's pretty much all he does. He sweeps left, sweeps right, sits on this middle thing, swirls the water around, that doesn't even hurt you so it's completely pointless and then after four hits or something like that he goes down. So that's the most difficult with the mini bosses which tells you a lot about the mini bosses in Act 1's of this game. And once we float down we'll be starting off Act 2 which starts with something pretty interesting. Now as I said, uh, this act has got some of the best music in the entire Sonic series, but we're going to get going with this weird wall shape here. Now, <clears throat> it's easy to panic about this sort of thing when you know there's a wall moving closer and closer towards you, but it, to be completely honest, this should never be any danger to you. If you just spin dash up like this, and sometimes you can even get a couple of these uh, platforms in one go, and that's it. <laughs> so we didn't even see the wall through that entire section there, so you can see just how difficult that really is. But uh, I'm waiting around here because I think this weird little hand thing is going to come up, but it doesn't, so I realise I'm probably not right, but here's one. So these things will sort of spin you around, make you go really fast, um, up these ramps and down these ramps, and we're going to try a bonus stage, see if we can get the third tie, but Nope, we're back into the Sonic and Knuckles version of Casino Night. We'll take a couple of rings and then get out of here again. But, there we go. And so let's keep going. Um, 
I think we're about to come across Yelp George. So that's why George is so annoying, and Turbo Spiker can be if you're not ready for him, but usually he won't cause you any trouble. George though, you'll be running around somewhere or jumping up a platform like that and three or four of them will come out of nowhere, you won't be expecting it and you'll get face bombed by him. Now these little moving platforms are just, if anything, they're just annoying because they slow the pace down. And I'm going to let you in on a little secret here. I do an awful job of trying to get up to this next level. Now I can just go right here and I know that. But, I don't know, I'm trying to be flashy. I'm trying to go all the way to the top. And in doing so, get really annoyed by one of those backward facing screens again. So then I accidentally jump down here and decide, right, fuck it, I'm just going to spin dash back up. Don't spin dash far enough. So now I've got to try the blocks again. By now I'm getting really impatient. If there's any, something that I really don't like in Sonic games, it's big long moments where you have to slow down. Um, it just feels like it's kind of defeating the object, and as you can tell, my impatience gets the better of me. So I decide, aha! I'll try and gather some speed with this ramp, and throw myself all the way to the top, and it works. But I'm being extra vigilant with the uh, spring this time. Uh, Turbo Spiker, once that spiky thing's gone, he's a complete curse, as I said. Um, so, let's get, go and make our way up through these little half loops. So again, this is one of those platform sections that isn't really very difficult, but it adds a nice bit of effect to the level, something, I suppose, unique to each one. Again, I like to check the walls, but there's nothing there. Jaws coming out of nowhere again. I really like this effect where you run or spin on the water. It, just, I don't know, it gives something pretty different to the level. So here's an invincibility box. Um, make Turbo Spiker even more easy to deal with, which is a shame really, because actually coming up here, right there, that's where Turbo Spiker is probably is the most dangerous, um, because he's sitting between those two loops, and if you're not spin dashing, then you'll just run straight into him. But, here we go, another special stage, this time on this weird yellow and purple looking planet. Um, same thing as usual, you know the drill by now, let's watch and see what happens. A success this time. So that's emerald number four. Is it emerald number four? Yeah, emerald number four. There we go. Three more to go, including that one that we messed up just now. So well on our way. Should have supersonic. Uh, spoiler alert, by the way, if you didn't know, that's what's coming at seven chaos emeralds. <laughs> Um, yeah, should have that probably by the end of the next zone. Um, and here we go. Again, I know I can go up there. Try desperately to get up there. Missed time to jump. 
get annoyed with myself and try it again. Oh, these sections. I get pretty lucky there to miss point Dexter, but let's try and get back up there again this time. So, on the subject of uh, the music actually in this level, and this is one of the better ones as I said earlier, um, there's some interesting stories flying around about the music in Sonic the Hedgehog 3 especially. Um, not so much Sonic and Knuckles, but in Sonic 3, uh, you may have heard rumours that it's possible, it's not credited, but it's possible that Michael Jackson apparently had something to do with some of the tracks on the Sonic 3 soundtrack. Um, and to be honest, it's pretty obvious when you listen to them all the way through which ones people think he had uh, any sort of part to play in, in, in putting those tracks together. Um, they all seem to have these sort of weird sound effects uh, alongside. This isn't one of them. This is uh, this isn't one of the ones I think anyway that uh, Michael Jackson would have had any part to play in. But if you listen to maybe you know Knuckles' theme, um, the theme, definitely the end credits theme. Not the end credits for Sonic uh, Sonic 3 and Knuckles, but just the end credits for Sonic 3. Uh, and launch base definitely, um, possibly Ice Cap. Uh, what else? Probably Carnival Night Zone as well. Um, all of them have these sort of. Oh, this is the Knuckles route, by the way. If you're playing as Knuckles, you're coming through that way. Um, yeah, all of those tracks have these sort of weird little sound effects that make up the tune. Um, and there's also rumours, I say rumours, that some people have put the end credits. Oh, uh, the end credit sequence, sequence next to. Uh, the song Strangers in Moscow and if you listen to those two uh, next to each other there is quite a heavy similarity between the, the tune the way it plays out and uh, it definitely adds it fuels the fire anyway of the rumours that Michael Jackson had something to do with the music on this game so coming to the end of this set oh, I really saw I could maybe jump onto that spike just then So I really think we can make that jump just now and just to prove a point, I'm going to stand on top of the spikes just to show you I can. Waste a bit of time. We've now been in this act for 6 minutes which is actually probably quite a long time for this zone, it shouldn't really be taking this long but then I did waste a lot of time going up those, uh, those moving block sections. Um, so let's just try and get through the rest of this a little bit quicker. Um, in case you didn't know, there's actually a 10 minute limit on every stage through, I think all Sonic games um, on the Mega Drive to be honest. Uh, once again, I really can't be bothered with these blocks this time, I'm just going to try and spin dash my way somewhere instead. And that'll do. Just watch out for this turbo spike out, and then and there we go. Um, yeah, you've got 10 minutes to get through pretty much every stage uh, across all of the Sega Mega Drive Sonic games. And if you don't, if you get to, if you, well, as soon as it gets to 9 minutes 59, after that second's up, you'll just instantly die basically. It doesn't matter where you are, what you're doing, even if you're, you know, about to defeat a boss, something like that. Knuckles send us down. We're going to go through one more of these weird little sections where the poles break. Try for a quick bonus stage, see if we can get that final one. Nope, so let's just quickly go through, see what we can get. And to be honest, I don't really want anything but a water shield here. Everything else is pretty useless to us. And, um, luckily, there's a blue sphere wandering about. I'm not really sure why I'm carrying on here, but let's just get out. We'll get out with the water shield, it's about the best we can ask for now.
but I'm determined to get to the top this time rather than failing miserably and falling back down to the bottom again. And a couple of one-ups as well, which is pretty good. RNG working in my favour there. And there you go, that's how you get through that stage the other way. And so here we go into the boss. So this machine's a weird sort of water cyclone grenade drop-in thing, and if you've got a bubble shield you can just pop a few hits off on a bounce. That's the best time to try and hit him, even if you've not got a shield, just when it comes down for this. Uh, as you can see, if you don't run away from that cyclone, it will pull you up, and then once you hit the propellers at the bottom, it will give you a nasty hit. You'll also get a nasty hit from jumping on the grenades like that at the wrong time. But the grenades are also an opportunity for you to hit Dr. Robot in there as well if you jump on them at the right time. But first of all, let's just demonstrate how you get away from this. So you just run away when he's spinning the water. That whirlpool will drag you in. But you shouldn't really ever be in any trouble from that. So yeah, you can bounce on top of these uh, to get yourself up there. Or you can just pop an insta shield at the top of your jump and there we have it zone 2 done four enemies down um, probably took a bit longer than I thought but there we go uh, that's the end of Hydro City and I'll see you guys in episode 3 at the Marble Garden <laughs>